in contrariety to the defendant's contention, he was not deprived of effective assistance of counsel at trial as the record before the hearing court demonstrates that the police had probable cause to arrest the defendant. See People v. Hoover, 251, Appellate Division 2nd, 348. The defendant's contention that the amended sentence was illegal and or excessive is without merit. When the defendant admitted to a violation of probation, the court warned him that it would not be bound by the agreement upon sentence of one to three years and would, in fact, impose an enhanced sentence. If the defendant was subsequently rearrested prior to his resentencing, upon learning that the defendant had been pre-arrested prior to resentencing, the court sentenced the defendant to two to six years imprisonment. Under those circumstances, the sentencing court was not bound by its original sentence promise, and it could providently and unilaterally impose an enhanced sentence. See People v. Thorpe, 189, Appellate Division 2nd, 903. In addition, the sentence imposed was not excessive. I respectfully dissent. In my opinion, the combination of the initial failure of the defendant's attorney to submit adequate moving papers, together with the county court's error in thereafter denying the defendant's motion to reopen the hearing to include the issue of probable cause requires reversal and the granting of a new trial. The defendant's attorney made an omnibus motion seeking to suppress his statements to the police. As grounds for such relief, he allegedly generally inter alia stated that his client's comments were obtained as the fruit of an unlawful arrest. The county court granted the defendant a Huntley hearing, summarily denied so much of the motion as sought a hearing on the issue of probable cause to arrest him due to his attorney's failure to submit sworn allegations of fact to support the claim that his arrest was illegal. After one of the arresting officers testified at the Huntley hearing, the defendant's attorney again asked the county court in the interest of justice to consider his argument that there was no probable cause for his arrest. The county court, however, considered only whether the defendant's statements were made in response to a custodial interrogation in violation of his Miranda rights. It is clear from the testimony adduced at the Huntley hearing that if the probable cause issue had been considered, all of the defendant's statements to the police would have been suppressed as fruits of an illegal arrest since at the time he was seized and placed in the police car there was no probable cause to arrest him based upon the behavior of his co-defendant. Under these circumstances the county court should have granted the motion of the defendant's attorney to reopen the, bear, bear, the hearing to consider the issue of probable cause. See People v. Campbell, 148, Appellate Division 2nd, 743. 539, New York Supplement 2nd, 476. And see also People v. Feinsod, 278, Appellate Division 2nd, 335. 717, New York Supplement 2nd, 330. I therefore would reverse and remit the matter for a new hearing.